Hi there, I'm Dre, the host and founder of The Dragon Network. Happy New Year. At the start of this year, HIMSS updated their MRAM maturity model, and it got me thinking that a lot of people may not be familiar with the fact that there's actually seven maturity models that HIMSS have. So in this video, I'm going to go over what those seven are and just a brief description of what they're meant to cover. So before I get started, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, go ahead and do that now. And as always, throughout the video, if you like the type of content that you're seeing, hit that like button so I know and can gauge what to put out for the future. So let's kick it off with NRAM, the Electronic Medical Record Adoption Model. It is used to assess the EMR maturity across a health campus. So it does focus on inpatient, outpatient, and day patient services within an entire system, but it is meant to sort of gauge what's happening on that campus overall and with the systems that are integrated and connected throughout that campus. So as with all of the maturity models, there are eight stages in total, ranging from zero to seven. And we start off with a highly paper-based organization and move our way up to completely paperless with full governance models in place, some disaster recovery, business continuity, and a secure and reliable health IT environment. NRAM, as with all of the maturity models, are meant to be used globally. It is by far the most common and the one that is most familiar to IT staff. Next up, we have ONRAM, which as you can imagine is very similar to the NRAM, but this time it's gonna focus primarily on outpatients. So over the years, this has also been referred to as ANRAM for ambulatory NRAM or PC NRAM for primary care NRAM. It is focused on those outpatient settings that are off campus. So any outpatient clinics that are, you know, specialty type clinics or primary care type clinics that are away from that hospital campus setting. And it's going to focus on person centric care. And again, taking you from a maturity model of a stage zero where you don't have connected systems, everything is primarily on paper. There's not a lot of interaction with IT and there's not a holistic view of what that patient record looks like all the way up to stage seven, where you are completely paperless, you have seamless interaction with all of the relevant care continuum locations, and everyone is comfortable using and interacting with the EMR, including your patient population through portals and things like that. Another one that's fairly popular is the CCMM, which is Continuity of Care Maturity Model. This one is focused on developing the maturity for care coordination, regardless of where the patient is seeking that care throughout the pathway, and in actually having sort of multiple pathway care coordination in place. So patients may be seeing one set of providers for one of their conditions and another set for something completely different. It's making sure that there's communication between both of those pathways, again, from zero to seven, with zero being not a lot of communication and coordination is in place and seven being everything is flowing quite nicely and all the governance structures and coordination and stakeholder alignment is there to support the movement of that patient wherever they go in their care journey. The DIAM or digital imaging adoption model is focused on all things related to the capture, reporting, interoperability, connection and communication associated with digital images within the healthcare setting. This absolutely encompasses diagnostic imaging, but it's also looking at imaging from other departments such as dentistry, dermatology, trauma, surgery, just anywhere that you can capture images that are relevant to the patient and that are part of their healthcare overall record. So this is capturing the images, reporting the images, exchanging the images and presenting the images so that the patient has access to them and can understand what the image is all about. AMAM is the adoption model for analytics maturity. So this one, as we focus on more big data around the world, more people are looking into this to find out where they are on this maturity scale. Everyone, of course, is reaching for that stage six or stage seven, where they do have a complete ecosystem that leverages big data and supports it. They have all the data management in place. They're utilizing metadata appropriately. It is driving their decisions for strategy. It is easily accessible, and it is in a place where data is actually enabling for better care, for more efficient care, and for decisions across the organization. Of course, starting at stage zero, none of that's in place. You just have ad hoc things that are very siloed and not centralized. So CSOM is one of the newer ones. It is clinically integrated supply outcomes model. This is focusing on making sure that your supply chain and logistics setup within an organization, within a healthcare entity, are actually in place and supporting your clinical system so that they're actually captured to that patient care journey and that you understand how supplies are being utilized 
not only so you can stock more appropriately and have less stockouts, but also so that you can find out some of those key analytics that you need off of supply use. So a good example of that would be utilizing different types of implants in surgery, which ones are tied to better outcomes so that you can actually use the supply information tied to the provider information and of course the patient information with some of the comorbidities, for example, and see that entire sort of life cycle of how supplies are integrated and how they're contributing to the outcome of patients. Last on my list, but certainly Certainly not one to be overlooked is Infram, which is the infrastructure adoption model. This one is a little bit more on the technical side, but is used by organizations around the world to assess what their infrastructure maturity looks like in that health organization. As you can imagine, it goes from very disorganized, very siloed, not connected stage zero, all the way up to a stage seven, which is something that is incredibly secure, has great policies in place, has a lot of risk mitigation factors for cybersecurity breaches, everything really that you would need to protect, secure, establish, and scale your infrastructure. So the stage seven model also takes into account some of the growth opportunities that are required, especially as we start to incorporate more big data and we're starting to see some of that sort of grow over time. We're also connecting a lot more things and Infram is looking at what that looks like from an infrastructure perspective. So those are the seven maturity models that HIMSS has. They do, of course, have programs and assistance to help organizations work their way up through these maturity models. Most organizations do choose to go after one at a time as opposed to going after all seven, but no one says you can't do that. And they are quite interlinked with each other. So you will find as an organization starts down one of the maturity model journeys, it's usually not long before they start to tackle another one. So stage seven is where everyone is aiming for all of these. We have some models like NRAM where we have a ton of stage seven people, and we've got some other ones where we're starting to see more and more stage sixes around the world and we're just waiting to crack that stage seven barrier. They are very important to be aware of. You may hear the terms and it may be one of the strategic goals for your organization to work towards achieving a particular stage level. I will throughout the course of this year do a deeper dive video on each of these maturity models so that I can provide you with more information on zero to seven. In the meantime, I'm gonna link to the maturity model hymns page below so that you can do a little bit of reading up on it. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your day. I will see you again next time.